beautiful here in the desert. It's a little hot. It's 87 degrees. And I just poured some water on my head. <clears throat> I mean, I did come out to the desert to make sure I didn't freeze my butt off. I'm not. Quite the contrary. Luckily, it's going to hopefully cool down for next week. Maybe get in the 70s. That'd be sweet. But, uh, desert's a desert, right? But in the winter, the desert is magical. Especially when it gets cold. Imagine wearing hanging on. Let's show you something real quick. It's so pretty here. Right up there. That's a Joshua tree right there on the other side of those mountains. Very cool. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I love these prompto videos. I'm never, you know, my production value, right? If you've seen any of my videos yet, and I'll try to sit still for this one, because this is important. I want to talk about tower moments. I, without realizing it, am an expert at tower moments. I didn't realize what they were called until I started doing tarot. But yeah, there are, there are moments in your life where, where you're seized by tragedy or, or heartache and, and hardship. For example, a great one would be me getting sent to my father for my mother because she couldn't handle me anymore. I was 10. And I thought about it and I was like, she can't handle me like I was a terrible child, right? But the truth was, is my mother, God bless her, was couldn't handle children, didn't want children. She wanted to party and have fun have a life and I was in the way I was the youngest the other two were teenagers the rest of my brother and sister were older so they were less you know in harm's way I was like eight nine running the streets of Sacramento like two in the morning so I was pretty it was a liberal you know upbringing but at the same time there was no attention no care I mean I can't imagine my children being run around a city at two in the morning at eight or nine you know, when my son was that age, I looked at him and I go, I can't believe my parents did that. They allowed that. But then again, that was something I had to learn. I had to grow with. And I had a lot of tower moments. I mean, a lot. And I look back and I'm just like, damn. Just, just the thought of, in the, my 10-year stint at education, from kindergarten to 10th grade when I dropped out, I went to eight different schools. And I wasn't a military brat. I just had a mom who moved around a lot. Parents were separated when I was five. So that was the first that was the first one. At age five, I was I had to make a decision to be with my father and my mother. And my father was very strict and he whooped ass with the belt. So obviously I gravitated to my mother who was like complete opposite, who was just like didn't care. You know, as far as like no nurturing, no, she was like a dude in a lot of ways. I call, I told people she was my roommate. Especially like in the teenage years, you know. I mean, I'm not trying to harp on my parents. They they were human beings. They were self-absorbed, you know. And they, you know, they've made their apologies, you know. And I accepted them. It's just, it's just one of those things where you look back and you go, "Damn, I survived all that," and still getting tower moments. I mean, this whole pandemic was a tower moment for everybody. I've just had them so much that it's just like, eh, moving on. It's just one more shitty situation that you have to survive and that's not a way to live that's not life this is it's been my life pretty much i've never had a stable environment never had a stable home and luckily it hasn't destroyed me and you know, kicked my ass a little bit but <clears throat> the reason why i'm telling you all this is because like i said if anybody's an expert at being shit on and having tower moments it's me and the love of my life shit on me that's that's probably the most biggest betrayal of all. I could I could have my parents betray me, my brothers, my my sisters. My sister Deanna's amazing, by the way. She's not like that. But yeah, I could have everybody in my life betray me. But the person I was expected to spend the my, my the rest of my life with, to grow old with, that was the that was the hardest. That was the one that almost crushed me. That's the reason why I spent the last ten years in isolation, <clears throat> trying to survive and trying to stay sane and keep going trudging on right despite your heartache and and trying to find a reason to keep going to keep breathing that kind of thing and it's gotten better a lot better than it was this last year has been really interesting so it's helped a lot in my conquering of the tower but the tower brings change
and change is constant. People fight that. And sometimes that alone could be a tower moment. Instead of like riding the wave, you want to go against it and it just tips the boat over, you know? Sometimes you gotta, you gotta expect a tower moment, prepare for it. When it happens, you just move on and, and ride the wave and survive and hope for the best. I mean, I want that for everybody. Everybody that's in this moment and trying to survive the, the Great Awakening, you know what I'm talking about. The rest of low vibration can give a shit. They're just selfish, self-absorbed humans. Karmics mostly. It's not just in the way of happiness. Just try to avoid them. Toxic human beings. But you're not. And I love you. And God loves you. And the universe loves you. And I want you to have a wonderful day. And terror moments happen. Just when they do, just be strong. Take a deep breath. You know, assess your situation. Pull your pants up and on. You're a warrior. You're stronger than you ever can imagine. I never thought I'd live this long. And here I am still kicking. So, there's always hope.